morning everyone. So today is Monday, a fresh new week, fresh new mind. I am ready for this. So as I said last week, I'm really panicking about this exam. Our exam's actually in April, it's not May, I got it wrong. I'm so sorry last week. So I've it's 9 a.m. and I am up and I'm ready to revise because if I <laughs> if I don't start doing something now, I'm gonna fail this exam. So I'm ready, I'm motivated, I can do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm started with some flashcards. I've already started here with proton pump inhibitors. I'm literally going through the BNF stage by stage because in every section it tells you what sort of drug it comes under and it gives you an explanation of the mechanism of the action in the body. So I'm literally going through that so I can understand which what medications do what. The cautions, the side effects, the interactions. And then I can get an understanding of the patients and the medications that they're on and what it's going to do to their observations in the body ready for the exam. Smart thinking, right? I hope so. <laughs> so yes, that's literally my day. I'm trying to think smart about this exam. I'm trying to keep my, re my revision as minimal but as in-depth as possible as I can because I don't want to over-revise like I have in the past and revise pointless things that I don't need for an exam. So I'm literally starting with the medications and how it's going to affect the body and then I'm going to go on to revise the compensation mechanisms of the body because that's a massive thing in these case studies and that's the physiology side that we're going to need. So I'm going to go back and look at those. We had that on the last exam, so I know a little bit about it, but I want to go more in depth to get those marks because this is level six and we need details in this exam. So yes, I'm going to keep going and I shall see you all later. We're here at Freshers' Fair at City South. We've got our pizza. Three pizzas. We've got three pizzas. <laughs> if you buy three pizzas, you get a free t-shirt. Amazing. <laughs> Model this t-shirt for you. Boom! <laughs> to vlog much during the week and lectures and things so I'm really sorry about that so I'm going to do a quick overview of what this week's been like third week in so Tuesday was our first day and we had our assignment lecture on policy and politics we were only in nine till one and that session that we had in the morning was just amazing it's exactly what we needed to get on with this assignment it was a question and answer session we got to ask all of the questions we needed to know about what to include in our assignment what we should be doing with our assignment and it was just a really really such a useful session it was amazing and then the next session after that we had this new lecturer that we haven't had before and he was amazing and sometimes you get a lecturer come into university to teach you and their energy and their passion shines when they're teaching and it just makes such a difference to the whole room it's fantastic and we learned so much and it really got us thinking about policy and politics in nursing for our particularly for our assignment so it's, i found tuesday the most useful day of the week so far and then Wednesday was a full day of physiology and our liver sessions and I am, or I was, I was struggling with liver. I still um, struggle with some aspects of liver and the in-depth function but I do feel a little bit more confident than I did back then. So I am a bit more confident on liver and after the Wednesday session I feel a lot more confident than I did from the start. So that's a bonus. I'm feeling much, much better about this exam. Not as bad as I initially thought maybe, I hope. And Wednesday was actually our last liver session so I'm I'm not gonna lie I'm really happy to get rid of the liver sessions and start a new case study so our next case study that we started today was a COPD and I knew that this one was going to be far better because we've done touched upon COPD before asthma the lungs respiratory system we have done that in previous exams so we've already got the basic knowledge that we need and we're just building on that and it's just so much better because we know the stuff that we're talking about whereas liver we hadn't done it before it was all new and we did all of us struggle i think 
but students are actually saying that they're, they're actually enjoying liver and they're enjoying learning about it, which is a bonus. And I can see that side to it as well because it is fresh and it is new. And you're thinking, wow, the liver does all these things that I didn't know before. But for an exam purpose, I'd rather not have liver for my exam. That's me beating off the liver for my exam. Sorry, liver. <laughs> so yeah, so if there's any other choice, I'm probably gonna pick that for the exam. But yeah, COPT, great, great sessions today. And again, we had a new lecturer with a slightly different style of learning. And the way she explained the physiology to us was bang on. She explained it to a T and then she was going into it. So she was, doing, she was actually questioning us as well as she went. Okay, so why does it do this? Why does it do this? Why does it do this? And it's a whole list of whys, whys, but why, but why, but why? And then you're constantly asking yourself, okay, why does it do that? Why does, um, your inflammatory response get activated. What does that? What does that do? Why does it do that? Why does it cause bronchoconstriction instead of dilation? Things like that. And so we're like, whoa. So I, I particularly liked the physiology session today. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if I've actually told you what our exam consists of, have I? So our exam is a written paper exam. It's two and a half hours. I think I might have said that before, but it is two and a half hour exam. We've got seven parts to this exam and they want to know, basically you've got a set of observations on the patient and the condition. So with COPD, his observations and all of the abnormal ranges that they're gonna be. So abnormal blood pressure, abnormal heart rate abnormal um, saturations, things like that. And we have to look at those observations. Then we have to list 10 things that we are worried about with this patient with the observation. So you put, I'm worried about blood pressure, whatever. And then you have to state what you're gonna do about that blood pressure. So what's your next step as a nurse? Okay, so you know that person's blood pressure is bad. What are you gonna do about it? So you have to explain what you're gonna do in the time frame you're going to do it and then your rationale behind it so the physiology of why that blood pressure is particularly high or low for the condition the patient has so you have to link it all in together does that make sense i hope i make sense in these videos so yeah so for example i don't want to go too much in depth because this is going to really stress me out trying to repeat this so for example let's just say i'm going to use the liver one just because there is one that's slightly easier so basically those of you that know the a b c d e approach you're going to know that you've got airway breathing circulation disability exposure and it, it goes down in order of the your list of responsibilities basically so when you approach a patient that's what you assess you assess their airway their breathing the circulation head to toe every time you see a patient whether they're alive unconscious whatever state that patient's in so let's use the liver patient for an example so we're going to check this patient's airway is the first thing we're going to do because as you approach someone you say hi how are you when they respond you're assessing the airway you'll be able to hear the gargling sounds the snoring sounds or is it clear how are they talking any sort of slight abnormality you might start to think oh okay what's happening with their airway so yeah so my first observation is airway i'm going to check their airway by speaking to that patient physically speaking and then as i'm listening i'm listening to the sounds of the airway signs for obstruction and i'm going to do that continuously because this patient in particular is at risk of a reduction in airway he's at, at an, a reduction of an airway because he's currently got these varices that have formed in his esophagus, which have now actually ruptured, causing a lot of blood. He's vomiting blood. So that means he's at more risk of aspiration. He's at more risk of an obstruction of the airway with all that blood building up if he can't cough it out, which means he can't get the oxygen he needs into his body. <sighs> and so on. <laughs> and so on. So basically that's so we have to do seven of those for every single observation. We have to explain, okay, why are we doing that? What are the reasons behind it? What is the physiological things that are happening in the body that's gonna decrease or de potentially decrease in the patient? So you ha that's why you're monitoring it, if that makes sense. I hope this is making sense to everybody. Um, so yeah, so this exam is going to be horrendous. <laughs> But I find things like these really, really useful because when I'm out there in practice as a nurse, I'm gonna be assessing these patients exactly like that and I'm gonna be able to apply that rationale behind why things are happening in the body. Okay, so it doesn't matter that they've got COPD or liver cirrhosis, the actual compensation mechanisms of the body, the heart, the respiratory rate, the renal, 
uh, they're all the same in every single person, no matter what condition they've got, they've all got the heart that works exactly the same way. But it's just the different conditions will affect it in different ways and there'll be different reasons behind it. Does that make sense? So out there in practice, I can input this physiology into my patient and work out and hopefully understand why something's happening. So yeah, so the physiology side, it was good. I really enjoyed today's lesson. And then after that, we had policy and politics. So we had an external lady come in and she just talked through about policies and politics within the NHS and things like the A&E crisis, staff shortages, all of that sort of thing. Things that we can implement again back into our assignment. And yeah, hopefully it's gonna be useful. And when I start writing, it's gonna make sense when I'm writing it, I'm hoping I can make it clear on an assignment because you know with assignments you have to explain every detail and why you're putting it in there what are the reasons behind it and really explain things in your assignment so fingers crossed I can do that within the 3,000 word count that we have to write it fingers crossed all in all it's been an okay week actually it's not been too bad a high and a low point of physiology but I'm feeling much more positive about it which is amazing and I'm starting to structure my flashcards and my revision technique now just so that my revision is hopefully going to be on point for my exam, fingers crossed. Over the weekend I've got a bank shift tomorrow, I'm, I'm back at my clinic in sexual health, Sunday I'm off all day. So Sunday I do plan to do a little bit of revision but also do some assignment writing as well. I'm trying to keep on top of both of them because we do have the exam and the assignment sort of in the same month, one week after the other. So I'm trying to balance those two right now and hopefully I'm gonna be okay. So that's it from me. Thank you as always for tuning in and watching. Thank you so much. If there's anything you wanna know, if there's an anything you want me to cover, just put it in the comments below, send me an inbox or something and I will try and do videos to cover what you wanna know because I want to help you hopefully. Help Hopefully this is helping you and I want to help you more if you're out there struggling or if you want to know more about nursing, anything, please let me know and I can do a video on that hopefully to help you out. So I shall see you for now. Have a great week ahead of you guys and I shall see you next week. Mm -hmm.